What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. In this video, I'm going to do a penetration test with my Marlin 1895 4570 government lever action rifle. And I'm going to be shooting it at some Douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber. And ammunition I'm going to be using in this test is some Underwood Ammo Extreme Hunter and Underwood Ammo Extreme Penetrators. And these rounds are very similar to each other. Some slight differences. Now the Extreme Penetrator, which is this one here, this is Underwood Ammo's flagship round that they really became famous for. And it's a brass solid bullet and it has these cutouts on the nose that make it kind of a hybrid between an expanding bullet and a flat nose solid. So it's a very unique design. And these bullets are made by Lehigh Defense right here in Pennsylvania. And Underwood partnered with Lehigh Defense many years ago. And they came up with this round here, the Extreme Penetrator round. So I'm curious to see how many pieces of Douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber this extreme penetrator round will penetrate through out of my 22 inch barrel Marlin 1895 4570. And this is actually a brass bullet guys. And here we have the extreme hunter, which is very similar to the extreme penetrator. The only difference is that the Extreme Hunter is made of a copper alloy and the Extreme Penetrator is made of a brass alloy. And you can also see the nose on these bullets is different. You can see the Extreme Penetrator on the right is a little bit flatter and less sharp. And the Extreme Hunter has kind of sharper features on the nose. Okay, you can see the nose is a little bit narrower and the petals that are cut into the nose are a little bit sharper on the Extreme Hunter, okay? Now the Extreme Hunter is actually 20 grains heavier than the Extreme Penetrator, but it looks smaller because brass is lighter than copper. So you need more brass to make up the same weight as copper but interestingly brass is harder than copper so brass is actually what safari cartridges are loaded with they use brass solids in safari cartridges because they penetrate really well so i'm curious how many pieces of douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber these rounds will penetrate through now I have chronographed these rounds out of my 22 inch barrel Marlin 1895 and the numbers I got for the 305 grain extreme penetrator was 2,243 feet per second and 3,407 foot pounds. So that's about 100 feet per second lower than advertised. Okay, they advertise 2350, and I'm guessing that's out of a 24 inch test barrel. And for the extreme hunters, I've chronographed these, and they travel at around 2,158 feet per second and generate around 3,360 foot pounds of muzzle energy. So they both generate about the same amount of muzzle energy, slightly more muzzle energy being generated by the extreme penetrator just another 50 foot pounds more which is really negligible both of them moving at around 2200 feet per second so they're moving pretty fast and the rifle i'm going to be using for this test is my marlin 1895 4570 22 inch barrel this is a customized marlin 1895 i did a lot of stuff to it I added this tri-rail, okay, I added 
this Brockman's front sight, which has these steel wings to protect the post, and it also has a tritium vial in there. I extended the magazine tube all the way out by using a Marlin 1895 Cowboy magazine tube. And I got a 2 to 7 power Burris handgun scope. It's the Electro Dot handgun scope, which they unfortunately don't make anymore. But there's basically just a red dot in the middle of the reticle where the crosshair meets. And I got the excess lever rail. This wood is the original walnut wood that came with this rifle. 20 years old, still in good shape. Wild West guns, big loop lever. And I got a ghost ring rear sight. I got this beautiful butt cuff cartridge carrier from Mason Leather. Check them out. If you want to get something like this, use my promo code NY10 and you'll get 10% off. Go to masonleather.com. I absolutely love this thing. It's beautiful. Check that out, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really curious how many pieces of lumber these extreme penetrators and extreme hunters will go through. These are made for penetration. So let's see if they live up to their namesake. But I hope you guys enjoy the video and thanks for watching. All right, guys. 4570 versus 2x10 lumber. Underwood ammo, extreme penetrator, and extreme hunter. First two shots are going to be with the extreme penetrator. Second two shots are going to be with the extreme hunter. Right, guys so it looks like two of the shots exited out actually three shots exited out so I'm gonna take two more with the extreme penetrator and the extreme hunter I'm gonna aim more in the center of the wood so it doesn't exit out the side
All right, guys, so those extreme penetrators and extreme hunters penetrated a lot more wood than I thought they would. I had 10 pieces of wood here, 10 Douglas fir 2x10 screwed together, and look at how they just completely destroyed the wood there. So what happened was my first round of shots, one of them exited out here. So if you do the math, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, exited out the seventh board. And then on this side, we had both the extreme penetrator and the extreme hunter exit out on this side as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exited through the eighth board. And then I took two shots in the middle. One was right here and then one right there and it looks like they penetrated through all 10 pieces and look at the damage they did to the wood back here guys just completely destroyed this wood and they should be sitting right in there we got one bullet in there that's the extreme hunter and I did see the extreme penetrator and it was stuck in this last board here so looks like 10 boards 10 douglas fir 2x10s there it is guys there's the extreme penetrator pretty impressive so the extreme penetrator and the extreme hunter both of them penetrated through 10 pieces of douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber that is pretty impressive guys let me see if i can dig out this extreme hunter there it is and the nose actually flattened out quite a bit and it's actually really hot still even though the extreme penetrator is cool to the touch but the extreme hunter is a lot hotter but you can see it flattened out quite a bit but the extreme penetrator did not flatten out at all and that's because it's made of brass but i'm going to take a closer look at these bullets i'm going to pull apart all this wood and We'll take a closer look at the damage that was done, the wound channel from these extreme penetrators and extreme hunters, but 10 pieces of Douglas fir, 2x10 framing lumber. That's really impressive for a bullet that's not actually designed for super deep penetration because it has those cutouts in the nose that kind of make it perform like a hybrid between an expanding bullet and a penetrating bullet. So I was not expecting that. I was expecting maybe six or seven boards, but 10 boards definitely took me by surprise. That's the same amount of penetration as the Buffalo Bore 380 grain mono metals. So pretty impressive. Definitely good for bear defense for sure. The only thing is that they did veer out the side here, even though I had a pretty good hit. This was a really good hit right there and it veered off to the left and exited out. So they do have a difficult time penetrating in a straight line because of the way the nose is shaped, but it's definitely not a bad choice for bear defense if that's all you have. And let's just take another look at them guys, check that out. Look at the difference between the extreme hunter and the extreme penetrator, how the extreme hunter got flattened out but we're gonna take a closer look at these bullets and the wood, so stay tuned. All right, guys, I just wanna give you another close-up look at these bullets after they penetrated through 10 pieces of Douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber. That is a lot of wood, guys. If you do the math, that's about 15 inches of wood. That's a lot of wood, guys. Very impressive penetration. I was not expecting that at all. So as you can see, the noses on these extreme hunters flattened out quite a bit. Look at that, guys. They look like starfish almost compared to what an unfired bullet looks like. And you can see the difference there, okay? So that's one of the drawbacks of using this particular 
round is that it's made of copper alloy, so it's a little bit softer than the Extreme Penetrator. That nose flattens out a little bit more. I'm not sure how well it would do in other types of media, but I will be doing a variety of different tests with this ammunition, but you can clearly see how the nose is flattened out. Okay, check that out. Look at how they just flattened right out. So pretty interesting. So I'll just give you guys a quick spin of this one right here. Okay, flattened out, looks like a screwdriver, but pretty much everything else is intact. The base, the bearing surface looks good. Everything else looks good. It's just the nose flattened out just a little bit. I don't really think that makes a huge difference. It's actually pretty normal for copper alloy bullets to do that. All right, but no massive deformation at all. You can see some of these pedals here started like folding over a little bit, but no major failure to report here with these bullets, just a little bit of flattening out. Now let's look at the Extreme Penetrator, which basically maintained its shape 100%. You can't even tell the difference really between this unfired round and the bullet that I recovered. So, I mean, it looks pretty much the same. No major deformation, as you can see. It looks basically 100% the same. The nose looks perfect. Look at that, that's crazy. After penetrating through 10 pieces of Douglas fir 2x10, just still in perfect shape. That is just incredible. So in my opinion, if I had to choose between these two, I would just go with the Extreme Penetrator because it's made of brass. So it's much more robust than copper. And I like how the nose is flat to begin with. It has these flat pedals here versus the Extreme Hunter has those sharp pedals which just end up flattening out anyway. So I want to just show you guys the wood so you can see the damage that was done. But once again, the Underwood Ammo, Extreme Penetrator, and Extreme Hunter for the 4570 penetrated through 10 pieces of Douglas fir 2x10 framing lumber, which is the same amount of penetration that I got with the Buffalo Bore 380 grain dangerous game mono metal. So it's pretty interesting that a flat nose bullet would penetrate the same amount as one of these. So, so here were our shots one, two, three, four, five, six. So here we have board number one. Okay, all the exit holes look pretty much the same. Here we have board number two, okay, and you can actually see that screwdriver shape wound channel here, okay, from the Extreme Penetrator, check that out, and the Extreme Hunter has less of that screwdriver shape. It still has kind of a screwdriver shape, but it's not as pronounced as the Extreme Penetrator. You can clearly see that that screwdriver shape there. And here are the exit holes. Check that out. Here we have board number three. Okay. Here we have board number four. All of them still penetrating. Check that out. Nice exit holes. Here we have board number five, all of them still penetrating. And you can see the holes are pretty much the same size. There's no expansion occurring here, so they're gonna stay the same size. And then here we have board number six and onwards. And wanted to just show you this exit hole here. This was one of the rounds that exited out the side and look at this massive wound channel here. Check that out, guys. 
That's just crazy. Look at that. I mean, could you imagine that exiting a big game animal? The damage that would do. Okay, and here's another one. All right. And that's the eighth board that it exited out of the eighth board on the right side here. So I'm going to just give you guys a closer look now at the last few boards. So these were the last few boards, boards 5 through 10, and just complete destruction here. I mean, there's not much I can really show you guys. The wood was just blown apart into pieces. So that's pretty much it for this one. Stay tuned to my channel for more 4570 penetration tests. Check out my 4570 playlist where I put all of my 4570 videos, and I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner of this video. And if you want to see all of my lumber penetration tests with other calibers, check out my lumber penetration tests playlist, and I'll leave a link to that also in the top right corner of this video. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.